I'm here, Mario. I'm here. <laughs> Not uh, I don't have. Yes, I'm Ready? here. Hi, sorry. Uh, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. I can't see anyone because I'm in this mode, but yeah. All right, we can't see you, but we can see your your slides. That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right. So our next speaker is Zhengyi Zhu, speaking on hierarchies of contact manifolds. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, let me into the presenting mode. Okay, so my research focus is on symplectic and contact topology. So let me first uh, tell you what's the definition of a contact manifold. A contact manifold is an old dimensional manifold with a hyperplane distribution Kc, such that Kc is maximally non-integrable. That is, it's opposite of Kc is a foliation. Um, or uh, in formula, it's like saying we have a one form alpha such that uh, Kc is a kernel of alpha and we have this, uh, wait, sorry. Uh, such that alpha wedge the alpha mi uh, minus one is, uh, is non-zero. I'm trying to get my pen to work, sorry. Oh, sorry, for some reason my pen doesn't work. So anyway, the so basic examples of uh, uh, contact manifold are R2 and minus, uh, 2 and plus one with this standard contact structure. Uh, the other example is a sphere and uh, you view this sphere as a unit uh, sphere in CN and you consider the complex tangency which is you take the tangent space of the sphere and intersect with uh, the tangent space after you rotate by the complex structure. This is also a, a contact structure. And more generally, you can uh, consider the unique unit uh, sphere bundle in the cotangent bundle, and also the links of isolated singularities. All these are uh, contact manifold. And here is a picture of the standard contact structure in R3. And as you see, there's this twisting, basically because contact structure is not- I'm sorry, I will, I will also need to leave about 10 minutes before uh, uh, we Uh, so, uh, so this is the standard R3 and the basic uh, 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 result in contact topology is every, uh, every contact manifold locally looks like this standard picture. So contact topology is really a global problem. And the fundamental theorem in contact topology is the following dichotomy, which is the over twisted versus tight. And this phenomena was first discovered by uh, Elashberg in 90s for dimension three and by Bowman, Elashberg, Murphy for all higher dimensions a few years ago. And the over twisted contact manifold is a class of contact manifolds where the existence and uniqueness are completely equivalent to the existence and the uniqueness of the underlying topological data, uh, which is a splitting of the tangent space into a trivial bundle and uh, 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 an another even dimensional bundle with the almost complex structure. This is also kind of equivalent to say that the structure group of the manifold can be reduced from SO to M plus one to UN. And this is a purely topological. And the tight is something, uh, some contact manifold which is not over twisted. Okay. And over twisted contact manifold should be understood as a simplest contact uh, manifold. Okay, so the question, natural question we can ask is, can we classify contact manifolds up to isomorphism? Um, if you are classify over twisted contact manifolds, then the theorem uh, by uh, Elashberg and Bowman, Elashberg, Murphy basically tells you, you can, it's a purely topological problem. But what about the more complicated tight contact structure? Uh, the answer is probably not. It's uh, probably very hard to do this. So maybe we can ask a weaker question, which is, can we understand the contact manifolds up to cobordism? Just like we, we, we have succeeded in the classical differential topology. So let me first tell you what's a cobordism I'm going to consider. Uh, 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 w lambda is called the exact cobordism from a contact manifold Y minus to another contact manifold Y plus, if only if the boundary as 
contains these two components, y plus, y minus. And uh, the uh, exterior differential of lambda is the asymplectic form. And this lambda is called the Liouville form. And the vector x, which is a dual to the uh, Liouville form, is pointing out along y plus and pointing in along y minus. And last is a condition about the compatibility with the contact structure, which is uh, the contact uh, hyperplane distribution on the boundary are given by the kernel of this one form restrict to the boundaries. And this is a cobosan from y minus to y plus. And when y minus is empty set, this is called uh, exact filling or Liouville filling, which has appeared in Laurent's talk uh, last week. And the symplectic cobosan category is this category whose objects are contact manifolds and the objects uh, morphisms are uh, exact cobosans. And the composition of morphisms is just you stack one cobosan onto another. Okay. And the interesting feature about this contact cobosan carrier is it's not symmetric. You cannot inverse orientation or maybe conjugate the uh, complex structure. So the cobosan is not symmetric. And uh, in particular, cobosan put a partial order to the collection of contact manifold. And the principle here is complexity of contact manifold will increase uh, in a cobosan. That is y plus, uh, y plus is always more complicated than y minus. And uh, the over twisted contact manifold are actually in the bottom of this order. That is in dimension three, there exists the exact cobosan from any over twisted contact manifold to any contact manifold. And in dimension bigger than five, the same holds if there's no topological obstruction. That is, if you can, you have a almost a, a complex cobordism uh, between these almost contact manifolds. So this is a, the, the topological construction is totally homotopic uh, theoretical. And so this uh, can be viewed as tight. It's more complicated than over twisted in this uh, hierarchy. But question is, can we get a refined description of the hierarchy beyond this? Okay. So the goal is building functors from contact cobosan category to a totally other set H. And our plan is building functor as a composition from the contact cobosan category to some algebraic categories and then to a totally other set. Uh, the first functor will be a version of simplex field theory or SFT introduced by Ali Ashberg, Hofer, uh, and Gewenthal in uh, 20 years ago. So let me first tell you what is SFT. So let Y be a contact manifold, and we can consider holomorphic curves in the simplexation, which is you time Y with copy of R. You can make this thing a simplectic manifold. It's an open simplectic manifold. And then we consider holomorphic curves in this simplectic manifold uh, with punctures and also genus. And we need to consider the a compactification of, of our moduli space. So a typical degeneration for our modular space will be like the picture uh, in the slides, which is you have a curve, but it will develop into, develop into two levels. Uh, so cylinder with T here means uh, cylindrical, uh, sorry, means uh, trivial cylinder. You can basically uh, forget about them. And if we define some structure map by counting rigid holomorphic curves, that is like holomorphic curves with the main virtual dimension zero, and this picture basically tells me that uh, the one dimensional modular space will have boundary basically like a uh, two level buildings. So that means uh, if we define structures by counting rigid curves, the relation we have will be some kind of quadratic relation. So here is an example of actually carrying out this construction. Uh, so let V be the space spanned by the revolvers of Y. Uh, and we count all holomorphic curves defined the count of all rigid holomorphic curves will define operator DSFT on huge space SV uh, H bar, which is the uh, symmetric algebra of V, and then you add your uh, uh, operator uh, uh, element H bar. And uh, the relation, quadratic relation we get is DSFT square is zero. And the definition, uh, uh, definition due to Wendell and Lachev is the algebraic torsion of a contact manifold is defined to be the minimal number k such that h bar k is zero in the homology. Um, h bar is always a closed class. This is asking whether it's a, 
exact class. And the main, this, this actually is a functor from the Cobosian category uh, to uh, natural numbers union with infinity. And in particular, uh, this is a subjective functor. And if uh, the value of this functor is smaller than infinity, then y has no feelings. And in the proof of this theorem, they find is a curve actually. So we, we want h bar to be zero in the homology. That means we have to find a primitive. In other words, we kind of want to find a curve to cure these classes. And in the proof, uh, in their proof, they found the curve is actually have genus zero. So they ask the question that can we uh, reinterpret this result only use rational theory. So this uh, example here is using all holomorphic curves. Okay, so here comes uh, uh, our work. Uh, so rational SFT is a specialization of SFT where we only consider rational curves. And in particular, the rational SFT of a contact manifold is a Bile infinity algebra. So the definition of Bile infinity algebra is a bit involved. It basically consists of uh, these operators PKL from the K-symmetric uh, tensor to the L-symmetric tensor satisfy certain uh, quadratic relations. And the reason why it's called the uh, Bile algebra, Bile infinity algebra is if you have PK0 is zero for all K, then PK1 is the L infinity Li infinity algebra and the P1K is a co Li infinity algebra and they are put into together. And uh, using this, you can view uh, rational SFT as a functor from contact cobalt category to the uh, category of BL infinity algebras. And using this structure plus some other structures you can put on it, we define two functors, uh, algebraic planetotion PT and the planetary P, both from contact cobalt category to integers uh, union infinity. And when the planetotion is smaller than infinity, uh, the P, uh, planarity PY will be zero. And in the next case, when PY is one, there's another functor called semi-dilation. It's evaluated into uh, integers. And the main theorem is the following, that there is a monoidal functor H, we call it the hierarchy functor, from contact cobalt category to the total order set like this. So first you have this uh, planarity is zero, but you have uh, PTs from zero, one to infinity. Then you have planarities one and the order of semi-dilation is from zero to one. And then you have planarity will be two, three to infinity. Okay, and the example found in Wendor and Lachif's result actually have the same number of planar algebraic torsion. So this answers uh, their question. And in particular, if P, uh, planarity is zero or uh, the planar portion is smaller than infinity, Y has no filling. So the first portion corresponding to this part where there's no simplex filling. And when planarity is bigger than zero, then Y where has filling and even multiple fillings. So there are a lot of hierarchy going on afterwards. And another fun fact is uh, if Y, if the Weinstein conjecture fails for Y, uh, then the planarity of Y is infinity. So it's very high up in the hierarchy if there's a counter example. And the nice thing about this functor is we can have like lots of estimates for this functor. So uh, if Y has planar K torsion, which is a purely geometric concept, then planar algebraic planar K torsion will be smaller equal to K. And the planar zero torsion is exactly over twisted. If Y, and then we have a upper bound for planarity, and then we also have a lower bound for planarity. And the moreover, we know that these functors PT, SD, and P are all subjective. So there are rich structures in this contact cobalt category. And uh, a special case is uh, algebraic torsion equal to zero, and it's equivalent to planar algebraic torsion zero. It's also equivalent to so-called algebraically over-twisted, which is by, defined by the vanishing of contact homology and all of them will be implied by over twisted. And the conjecture is that uh, whether, well, maybe a question is whether uh, over twisted will be implied by any of these conditions. Okay. And uh, last, I want to mention some uh, previous results uh, uh, and how to reinterpret the results using this new language. And uh, 
if you remember the last uh, short talk, uh, short, short talk I gave here, I talk about symplectic homology and dilations, and I showed that this FN variety carries a structure called K minus one dilation, and uh, I also have proved that RP two minus one uh, with the quotient contact structure is not exact fillable if A is not power of two. And in fact, this result, the proof of the theorem actually can be interpreted as computing this functor. In particular, the uh, hierarchy functor on the boundary of this I5 variety is K minus one SD, if, only if, M is bigger than K. And the second is the hierarchy functor you apply on the quotient, uh, quotient by ZK is zero SD, if and only if n is bigger than k. And this is deeply related to the conjecture of uh, Ali Ashberg that RP2 minus one is not exact fillable if only if n bigger equal to three, which is exactly the condition here. And I want to end this talk with some speculations I found very interesting is the examples here, contact manifold are actual links of singularities. And the conditions n bigger than k and n bigger than k are exactly the condition for the singularity to be terminal. Uh, indeed, this can, if the condition fears that the singularity stop being terminal, the value of H will be different and most likely it will increase. So the question I want to raise is there some connection between terminality of singularities with the contact topology, especially this functor H of the uh, contact links. Uh, that would be all, thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? So Jengi, what do you think? How far are you away from saying that all this algebraic invariants are almost characterizing having a filling? Uh, so, 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 so all this structure we kind of, for filling we have an algebraic analog which is called augmentation. So every filling will give us augmentation, but the reverse direction is typically very hard, especially because if we restrict filling to be smooth fillings. But I think at least in low dimensions, maybe uh, uh, if you understand algebraically what a filling is, maybe you, can, you will be able to construct a singular filling in some sense. But uh, in higher dimensions, I, I, I'm very skeptical that uh, any kind of algebraic classification will actually give you honest uh, uh, geometric correspondence. Thank you. Any other questions? Let's thank the speaker again.